69% of South African women are considered overweight, meaning that the average South African woman is wearing a size 36 or 38. Where do plus size women currently get their clothing? At, at this moment, how much, how well is the business doing? How are you going to be using the money? Yes. And which avenues are you going to be using the money for? Ngabo. Gonyaka 2013, kutiwa ge e-clothing and textile industry. Ia came seven, zebale logu 14%. Kona lapa wana lumkaka lona wala ekai. Upindo kumbu lugu tiyo nagele nkunza le, ilete imali eningi ga kulu. Umangabe kubale logu la kwa ba tax revenues. We have an e-texting the clothing industry. In Kunja Gulaga Kulu to Muntu and Gazakela Majel and Saza Guion. Ubunolo, Omunabosa, my business, Abakula in Kondu, Yaban to Guanalum Kakalu, Jongo Bagayena, and the Izimbas, the best man, Abon Ligi. Namtanja we making moves si tanga na nobu nolo. Iko sasa nene mnyaga u 21 years old. Yona age as misele uguti so kukula izinto. Genja la zenzo anga kwa na kwa zimfashi ni gule lagit. For the ladies about bolt, bangai kola as iroko or bafaka ma leggings. We also meet her family and friends to learn more about her upbringing. As a schooler, they were always running smaller businesses outside of Umseven Zwabo. Later, she visits our studio to share her vision and plans to spread her fashion brand across the continent. Why do you create uh, fashion for plus size women? Because I am one and I've struggled to find clothing. My name is Bunola Matabuche and I'm the founder and head designer of Afri Blossom. Afri Blossom is a plus size clothing label based in Johannesburg. What's special about us is that we provide African, unique and chic clothing for the cosmopolitan, fashion forward African woman. You can find us at 27 Boxes in Marvel and watch out for our online store which will be www.afriblossom.co.za. Emoli <laughs> So morning, I found it very difficult to find me back at eight dollars. So I thought instead of getting in there some American company or someone else to come in the country, but see I will decide because I understand about Fazal Khan and Jengami who want to dress like me. Mm-hmm. And Gabon with school as a family like none, I guess it will be a nanny like more. In the Langa and Pambu, Napandu, Guaco, Ugutu, and I, Amy and Gastra, who told him, but when some companies that you come to tie, abandon that back to the Tolama size, I will hang up. Yes, just from Umdenwami, yeah. Abu Mama Mama Bantu Bamu, Uncle Mutu complain about the same thing. Aba kuni tuli pasha bas tanda yo, or as is is in this is tanda is is lingani or ba zenze le masai zwe tu. So I was like, okay, this is clearly a problem also for me, especially as a young woman, yeah. because the kuni pasha, but then you feel like it's too old. Oh. So it was bridging that gap, and as well as doing some research, I've always done design yeah. at school, so we would have to research, and I found that the fashion industry in South Africa is a 3.9 billion dollar industry. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, well. This is a viable thing, yeah. and there are very few brands who specialize in the plus size. Uh, 
Aha, telling you that I'm going to wear a bowl. Okay. So I'm going to wear a shirt dress. So for the ladies, I'm bold. I'm going to wear as Morocco or my leggings, shorts, pants, anything. So it's a multi-functional piece that we like to have, mm -hmm. and it's one of our best sellers. So Lena, it's our winter version, mm -hmm. and further in the front we have our summer version. Summer I'm sure. Version. The Afro Blossom gears is through Umaga Bonolo. When Bonolo Ekala is designed work here, and ends at her first show, and Engela would say give a model for for that show. See my ethnic cavities. See when a problem you you tell like into Ekala Gase from normal retail shops. Obaza kelo wongu muntu. The lace is specific for Avant Avant Jeans. Is the person is in ten years old, so she's with the business like Lin Don Jovale Le Pami. I bought in a new business partner, Orly, and she is Congolese, and she's been doing this on the side as well. Mm -hmm. So we decided, since you've been doing private clients, which is something mm -hmm. that we want to get into, styling someone's whole wardrobe, mm -hmm. and I mean, I've been doing the commercial side. Let's merge and come together. Oh, aha. Good this day. is my gorgeous partner. Oh. Okay. How are you, gorgeous partner? Oh, I'm amazing. Thank you for having me. Uh -huh. So please tell me a bit about your working relationship together. The concept, if you will, or our vision um, in life was pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. We had said what we wanted was to be able to dress women in a manner that could accommodate their body types, where they were going, mm -hmm. the environment, the circumstance. And she had said, OK, well, I'm, I'm busy doing commercial, but I feel like I'm not reaching my target and I said no I think since you and I are both going towards the same direction that we should merge together and try to bring in Afrinique Chic mm -hmm. and Afri Blossom together. I'll leave you two to chat business a little bit <laughs> and then I'll come catch up with you later. Great, perfect. Cool. Hi. So I'm going yes. to the factory now. Yes. Yeah. Are you ready to move on to the factory? Yes, ma'am. Looking forward right. to it. Um, but before we head out, you guys are established in a new mall. Yes. And your shop is also relatively new. How is business going so far? It's slowly picking up. People are starting to hear about 27 boxes. We're having a lot of people come back who first came to browse and now they're coming to shop. Mm -hmm. And so far, I think you've got two employees working like I. You and someone else. Yes, so we have a store manager who's on leave at the moment, uh -huh. and then it's me and Already. Yes, so we try to, every day, come up with what happened during the day, what ideas we have, the whole concept, and how to move forward for the next day. So yeah. we actually do get involved into it, although one is not here, yeah. the other one picks up the relay. Yeah. And, yeah. and she's very good at paperwork and research. So I guess that's the beauty about the partnership. Yes. yes. All right, no problem. Okay, thank you. Shall we head out to yes. the factory? Yes. Ladies, after you. the factory um, and this is where we get all our clothes made so today we are getting samples made so that's why you see our patterns here are on a piece of paper and this is basically the roadmap to how to make a dress yeah. without this we don't know how to make the dress okay yes. so please introduce me to this gentleman this is Arnold and he does all our clothes he yeah. sews everything for us so I'm going to buy a shoe to Wednesday. This I'm pulling here when I land. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Tell me just through the working process. Eh, no now. Nenza ganja before Wednesday. Lama sample. Okay. Si abaya Wednesday. Lama sample. Where later? Lama samples. Yeah. Ba chokuti ba funa lo. Si abaya Wednesday. Lama samples. If you do it, where later? Lama orders. Si abaya Wednesday. Lama orders. I get dependent. So if we bring in this designer, if for instance we're going to bring in this skirt next month, so Suzo should also get Stella ten. So we'll bring orders. So it varies on demand. And sometimes if it all sells at a shop, then we'll bring in more. Okay, I get. Baba, I will cover you with seven zenge la poge. Singa sagmo she discarding ya bona. Discarding ega yonke mi seven zenge ya kwe nza ya she she sala. Is it 
I've got more money than you. <laughs> yes. They are. I've got a bigger network yes. than you do. How do you intend to compete with them? And they can make clothes cheaper than you do. fashion inkundlo kulikhuni kakhulu ukuthi umuntu angasebenza kiyona uphinde ukhumbule ukuthi amathuba akhona kule nkundla awaye khona ningi kakhulu sika sathi uqoqisana nobunolo sizo ukuthi ngabe yena na angakwazi ukuthi azakhele igama kuwona lo mkhaka imaking moves yaphinde yathola ithuba lokuthi iqoqisane nabantu abamaziga banzi yena bunolo basitshela ukuthi ke yinike yena ke menza ukuthi abe umuntu lawo yena and then I grew up with my grandmother um, in Mpumalanga till the age of about three and then I moved back with my parents. Um, we stayed in the Eastern Cape for a while and then we moved back down to Joburg and then I did all my primary school learning here until I was 13 and then we moved to Cape Town and I lived there for four years and in those four years um, I was an exchange student in America when I was 16 and then I came back home and then we moved back to Joburg. So I ended up being in like six high schools in the space of five years. I found that it helped me learn how to adapt quickly. So everywhere I went, I made friends quickly. I would be, especially in matric, when I was in that school, I was there for a year. By the time maybe we were three months in, I knew everyone in the school. And my friend was like, have you been here before? It's like, no, this is my first year just like you. It's like, how do you know everyone? I'm like, I made it a point to know people. Otherwise, if you don't know people, you can't assimilate into a place. I get my entrepreneurial spirit from Okoko no Mama because as a schooler, they were always running smaller businesses outside of Umseven Zwabo. So I always saw like, okay, well, you can sell easy, you can do this and that, that and the other. Obunala Wundana, exciting, always uh, creative, uh, talented, sensitive, uh, from Mama Lupi Du, Zenzi Zendangata, my bracelet, I found those things that I enjoyed, things that I saw school, and I changed my mood to live by him, by Shaba Chungeli logo, I think that I saw all those Mama Nje, Mama we umdo Chunga, I love that Mama February Gama, so mega busy Nje, mega cool. I think it was just being artistically inclined all my life. So whenever I was in school, if there were clubs or anything we could take, I took things that were more inclined towards the art. I did calligraphy and those sorts of things. And then over time, I was like, okay, it's clear I'm not gonna be a doctor or a lawyer or any of that sort of thing because of my personality type. I just get bored too easily. So I was diagnosed with Blount when I was six years old. And basically what it is, it's a growth um, disorder of your lower legs. So it causes them to bow. And in um, rare cases, it causes one leg to grow faster than the other one. So I had the rare form where my left leg was growing faster than the right. So initially I went to a podiatrist and they made me wear inserts. So it straightened out my right leg, but the left leg was just not having it. I was able to get a puzzle in a way, and I was able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were I will say she got a lot of her strong qualities from her mother, Sipiwe. Sipiwe is a very, very strong uh, woman. Uh, Benolo has always been with her mummy, you know, hand in hand, wherever the mummy is, uh, Benolo was. And she got that strength from Benolo, from her mother, Sipiwe. Benolo is not scared, scared to talk. If she wants to say something, she will say it. I would say everybody, because Uncle Mundu had EPC Akikai in my life, but mainly my mom. We were almost, it's like, Almost Ubuntu one. It's very strange. So we get along very well. Um, Ukokwami as well. Um, we're kind of total opposites, but we also get along a lot. Ngatubunolo uba strong ukwake kuvela from 
the many women in my family eh uma wama zanga isikolini eh zange nje ubone nomnyango wesikolo kodwa ke ungifundzisile wakhona ukuthi athengise she ran a few businesses and i learned a lot of business from her you know business acumen i always say man, i didn't learn marketing from a school in school when you funa nje ufuna a piece of paper but ama fundamentals akho nama dynamics aloko ngifunde kai my personality I just get along with people quite easily. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think it's just, I'm just an easy person. I don't find it difficult to move from one society to another. And also, I think I have lots of good ideas. <laughs> Sometimes a little bit crazy, but some good ideas that I think will help in the future and change the world to be a better place. Designer <laughs> Out of the studio, a little bit anxious, but I think I'm ready for you, Pepsi. I'm expecting a lot of hard questions to explain my business as best as I can and just to make people aware about what Afroblossom is all about. For many years, the clothing industry considered skinny as the norm. Even today, most fashion labels are still afraid of making plus size clothing. As a young fashion designer, Bonolo has charted into relatively unfamiliar territory for local fashion designers. She's challenging conventional fashion by creating a line for fuller figured women. She's here to tell me how the market is receiving her clothing. Miss Afri Plosso. Mr. Pixie. Bonjour. No, I'm not going to be here. Do you want to go Mama? So, other than the fact that you're a big girl yourself, <laughs> yes. why do you create uh, fashion for plus-size women? Well, because I am one and I've struggled to find clothing and it's a common problem amongst all my friends, my family members. So I was like, why is no one making clothes for us? And I was like, who better than me? Because a lot of people would ask me, where do you get your clothes from? How come you dress so well? I'm like, it takes a lot of looking around. So I wanted to make the job easier for everyone else. So your friends and family really do like our family. <laughs> Pretty much. It's, it's okay. So now tell me, you should be flying. I mean, South Africa has no shortage yes. of big boned girls. Um, we know. And, but they're currently buying their clothes elsewhere. Why are you not flying? Why are your clothes not flying off the shelves? Well, we're a relatively new company, so we've only been out for a year. So it is getting people to be aware of us and where to find us. And a lot of our clients or people who'd be interested are actually not in Gauteng. They're like, I'm in Bloemfontein, I'm in Cape Town. So now we're getting into going online. So that's when we'll start seeing things flying off because people can easily access us. At the moment, we're in Melville. So it's a little bit out of the way for some people. Okay, well, that, that sounds interesting. What about the likes of Queen's Park and Edgar's, who yes. all carry clothing for fuller figured women? Um, well, they almost cater for a particular niche market of the plus size, more the more matured women. So young girls like me actually don't find things that are either on trend or almost the design aesthetic is to cover up and we're like I have nice legs or I have nice arms I still want to show it off so it's finding clothes that are Indeed. right for <laughs> thank you mm. so it's clothes that are good for our aesthetic our look and we want to still look young I don't want to look like I'm 40 years old and I'm 20. Simply the likes of because your biggest competition I think is like a city chic. Yes and Donna and, Claire. And Donna Claire. They Donna Claire is a bit older Oh, but they've recently started bringing new things. I have a few pieces from them, so they've okay. been trying bringing leather jackets, colors, and prints. So there are some stuff that I would buy from them. Okay, so they've got more money than you. <laughs> yes. They are. I've got a bigger network yes. than you do. How do you intend to compete with them? And they can make clothes cheaper than you do. So um, how, how do you intend to compete? I still don't get it. How do I intend to compete to them? Well, firstly, by going online, because a lot of these retailers that you've mentioned have physical stores. 
as much as they have more money and whatnot, there is a niche or certain design aesthetics that they're not pleasing. So like with my uh, business partner, she's from the Congo and she has access to the expat community and they still want to wear their prints. There is no retailer that is selling clothes where I can walk in and find perhaps this top and I can wear it with my jeans that I wear every day. So it is our aesthetic and it is our marketing strategy because we're also more focusing on social media because more people are on social media than maybe reading a magazine. So if I can reach you where you are every day, every morning, you browse through your Instagram feed, so that's where we want to reach you. And the biggest mistake you've made? was trusting my mentor in the beginning because when I started my business, I had just dropped out of school because um, I had external fixation done last year, which is a surgery where they break your leg in two places and basically pull the bones apart and then your body will grow new bone because that's a natural healing process. So I contracted an infection during that and I had to drop out of school. So when I got that mentor, I put all my trust into him. So you it gave was, him money? Yes. To do what? He was my production manager. So, so make clothes. Yes, yeah, so I would and design. He, he didn't and make the clothes. No, he did make them. But mm -hmm. what he did was he was working with like four or five other designers. Mm -hmm. So all my designs that I designed, he took that and sold it to everybody else. So he essentially was having the same collection for everybody and sold my work. So whatever he had made, he probably gave it to other people because he was under pressure and whatnot. So I made the mistake of trusting too much in someone else because I felt that, oh, I just left school. I'm not about 80,000 Rand. Jeez, so, that's a lot of money to start off with. Yes. And any other mistakes that you've made in the past year? No, I think that's my biggest one. Since that one, I've really gotten into learning every aspect of the business, being involved in every part, and even in picking a business partner. I've really spent time to have, okay, is this the right person? Do we understand? Are we on the same page about a lot of things? Um, and also not just going for every opportunity, because there have been opportunities where I'm like, we're not ready. Mm. And people will be like, what do you mean you're not ready? You make beautiful clothes. I'm like, no, I don't want to put out a product that is not perfect yet. We're still, we're still in the process of perfecting our aesthetic and what we want to offer women. And just so kind of start again. three things you need to do, very briefly, because you're long, you've got a long tooth. You <laughs> talk a lot. Um, what are the three things you need to do to grow your business? We need to go online. Um, definitely get access to markets, get more people aware about our business. What does that mean? How do you do that? Probably getting into magazines, what it, where women are, we just need to reach them. So social media, TV, whatever it is, just get a good marketing strategy to reach the women that we want to reach. Are um, you getting into magazines? No, not, we're, not, we're not in print media yet, but okay. we're working on that. Um, you're a PR agent? Yes, okay. yes we do. And so, she or he is not getting you into magazines yet. No, we just recently started with her because we were with another one and they weren't getting us what we asked for. So we've had to try find the right people once again. And um, the third thing? The third thing is be more involved in um, fashion events. So fashion weeks, because that's where you get most of your exposure as a fashion designer. So getting more into those events. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to hand you off to a business coach. Do you have a coach, a mentor? Somebody that you run your <laughs> ideas by? Yeah, I have a few. You have a few. Okay. I've got a really special one for you. I'm going right. to give you some advice um, and some feedback that will hopefully help you grow your business. All right. And then I look forward to seeing you tomorrow when you come and pitch for some money from us. All right. Thank okay. you. Now that we've heard Bonola's plans, we're going to link her up with a business coach to help her grow her business into a successful, renowned African fashion house. He interviewed no Pepsi, I'm big out here. He was pretty tough on me. I thought I had a lot of things figured out, but clearly I have a lot to learn. Um, what stands out is that I need a very good marketing strategy because I think our product is good. It's just getting it to the women that we are trying to get to. to. You're not mentioning any some trusses and, uh, and all those people yeah. and so Okay. Now there's um, a bikini for big girls. It's called a fat kini. Oh, yeah. Making <laughs> My 
name is uh, Lucas uh, Molloy. I am the founder of the organization called uh, the Junto Group. The Junto Group itself was founded in uh, say about 2004 and we've been evolving around the years in that. I'm very involved uh, with uh, entrepreneurship in the country. organization also the business is really built on the model of improving entrepreneurship in the country and so when an entrepreneur has got a business and that it is very difficult for them to secure a board what we do we then come in as the Vogue advisory board and we become advisory board to them people don't do business with companies people do businesses with other people Innovation, innovation, innovation. If the organization is not innovative, then it is busy dying. That is one element that I need to see in every organization that I deal with. Entrepreneurs are smart risk takers, but they need someone with the knowledge to guide their steps in the right direction. How is the business doing? The business is doing very well from, because we have almost recovered from losing that 80,000. We've opened our first store. We're starting, we're looking to go have our online store. It's up, it just needs to change the pictures, change some of the design. So we're moving in the right direction to where we want to be. Are we making money? Not yet. We've only opened our store. We've only been open for about two months now. Okay. So we're and still building that client base. Building that client coming. That, yeah. Yes. And the business has been operating for a year now. Yes. She's got the personality for it. She's got the energy for it. She's one of those people that, that, that reminds you of uh, the day when you started this entrepreneurship journey. And um, employing how many people at the moment? We have one employee at the moment. Mm -hmm. We have our okay. store manager. And then it's me. I do most of the day-to-day -day running of the business, and I recently just got a new partner who's more on the admin side, more making sure the business, we stay on track because it's very easy as a creative to overlook certain aspects of the business Correct. for the sake of the, the right. art of it. Yeah. I like the fact that she went and got an A partner, uh, an equity partner in the business, who's bringing a little bit more experience in that, so that would be able to bring a strong team um, for the organization. I hear you mentioning you mentioning that you you have got the store manager so yes. looking after the store yes then it's you and then the admin you're not mentioning any some trusses and uh, and all those people yeah. and the designers <laughs> and all that so okay so everything we make is designed by me and my business partner so everything is originally by us and then in terms of manufacturing we outsource to CMTs okay. so we use one in Salbi at the moment, it's much better for us to um, outsource because it, they, they're a bigger company, they're getting more, a lot of work so they can charge us a lot less for production than if I had hired someone full-time, it'll cost us a lot more. And because you, you, you are a brand that stands for, for something also again, standing for a, a, a plus size women. Yes, gets, body positivity. You know, it gets very difficult for me every time when I, I didn't grow in a space where you had to be politically correct when you're speaking about weight. For instance, like one of our popular um, hashtags that we like using is fat friendly. And people would be like, how can you say that? I'm thinking, when you're in the community, it's okay for you to say these things because we make fun of ourselves exactly. and, and, and those types of things. It's okay for us to do it. It's okay for other people out there. And also, if you can't laugh at yourself, you can't, you can't take yourself too seriously. So it is understanding the dynamics of the community and what people are into. And even like now there's um, a bikini for big girls. It's called a fat kini. Oh, yeah. In the fashion industry, you need to be able to create that, that, that line that fits to that creativity. So the more people she has in who understand the style and the direction of the company and that, then she has got something that, some storage of this creativity somewhere. Well, uh, you know, for me, it's, uh, I'm liking the direction of the business and that. Uh, I'm liking what is coming out of it. I think there's great potential in it. Um, but again, you've got a competition. Yes. And one has got to think about how much do you need that money? How much can you do with that money? Yes. You know, so 
when you're going in tomorrow in debt, I want you to keep that in mind. Yes. I want you to think about what difference can this price really do to the business and that? What growth can we get from this business and that? And I want you to be able to put that up front to the judges. South Africa is about creating jobs. Yes. We need to create as many jobs that we can. Government's first priority is industrialists. I spoke with you early off camera about starting to create your own fabrics and that. Pay thought to it because it's going to make your brand special. It's going to make you, give you the edge and that. The idea of creating our own textiles was already an idea we've had. I uh, have mock-ups of things that I've already designed, but we just put it on the side while we try to get the brand out there, people knowing our clothes and people starting to buy, so that it will be an added benefit when we do have our own textiles. So we just need to get the brand out there first. And bring such things out, because when you are at that competition, that's what the judges want to hear. All right, thank you so much. All in that, thank you very much, and I wish you very well tomorrow, and I hope, uh, I hope you do well. Thank you. Great, thank you. Making Moves has a prize valued at 50,000 Rand to invest into a business. 12 young entrepreneurs will get a chance to showcase their businesses. Each entrepreneur will be given a chance to pitch for this investment to our panel of judges. The judges will use their own discretion to pick the top four businesses to go into our final episode where they will compete for this grand prize. You too can be part of this exciting opportunity for young entrepreneurs. So it's to go to your picture. Oh, this is one I'm right, a little bit nervous, but I think I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm into as I call trial and no mugs of good I know I normally maybe pitch to my own team new ideas, but never outsiders. Mm -hmm. So what are you expecting from the judges? Moba is all open or pepsi. Wakuluma foot in a coach. Kuno mundo statu o mushage onga mazlap. Koto age. Who's this one? What are you expecting from all three of them? I'm expecting a lot of hard questions, but I think I took the notes from yesterday and filled up the gaps where I needed to. Mm -hmm. So, see, I'm going to top four or not? Yes, hopefully. <laughs> yes, hopefully. Yes, with hope. But we want a yes. Hi, Asas, that's it. Shona Konage, Bako Miskutu to Mengani. Keep up the energy as well. Thank you. Gabo. But yes, with the hope. Oh, So we again again. I Good afternoon, how are you? Good afternoon, I'm fine, thanks. And you? Fantastic. Welcome back to Making Moves. Thank you. Are you ready? Thanks, so. sir. You are? Yes. Okay, you know Lucas? Yes. Spent a bit of time with him yesterday. This is Martine. Yeah. She is part of the judging panel. And you've got four minutes to present your business and wow us. And that four minutes starts now. Right. Thank you. So Afri Blossom is an Afri Unique Chic plus size lifestyle brand. We don't just do clothes, it's a lifestyle. So a little bit of background about this is that it was founded by me in 2014. Um, it was formally launched at the bus factory with the support of the city of Joburg and the Gauteng Enterprise Propeller. And within two months of being out, we were carried at Burgundy Fly, which has branches in Maponya Mall and at the Zone in Rose Bank. And this year we had the opportunity to showcase at the Mercedes-Benz African Fashion Festival with other African designers. So, and we've opened our first boutique in Malville. So I think we've done a lot for only being out for a year. So about us, Every Blossom is a plus size women's brand. But it's not just a brand about dressing plus size women, it's about normalizing African print, making sure that we're comfortable and showing off that we're sexy and attractive. We also cater, we cater, so we cater for a wide range of women. So from the ages of 18 to 50, because we found that in the plus size market, what is available is more aimed at the more matured women and not necessarily at the younger generation, but also that the more mature women want new options and to look more youthful. Now our company is 100% female black owned and we want to keep it that way because we want to build a business that is for women by women because we understand our needs the best. Our goal is to create a women's clothing brand that becomes a lifestyle. So when you wear Afro Blossom, you know that there are other things that 
it has connotations that come with it. So like with our online store, our aim is to have a blog attached to it where we have contributing um, editors from like normal everyday women talking about what styles work for their body shape. So almost becoming your best girlfriend when you want to dress up and go out and know anything African or how to be a better woman. Now, the South African women's wear industry is worth $3.9 billion. Now, this is a very lucrative industry for us to be in, and we would like to just capture about 5 to 10% of the market within the next 10 years. Now, there was a study done in 2014 that found that 69% of South African women are considered overweight, meaning that the average South African woman is wearing a size 36 or 38, and they're already catered for in the market, but the higher than that, not so much, but we want to cater for both the average woman and the plus size women because we know in our families or in our circle of friends we're diverse and we would all like to shop in the same places. Now our major competitors in the market right now are Donna Claire, Penny C and CD Chic who has just come in and is here on a pop-up basis. Now our, what gives us a competitive advantage is our distinctive design process where we supply designs that are specifically designed for the fuller figure taking into consideration different proportions, different body types. Now, use it, and also what we do is use fat-friendly fabrics. As you can see with the uh, samples we have in front of you, we always try to use fabric that has stretch in it, and if that's not possible, we use clever um, pattern making to make sure that it's still comfortable, it fits, and we also try to give enough um, seam allowance that if a garment is a little bit too small for you, you can open it and you don't have to buy a size bigger, because sometimes that's not necessary. Now, we also design both in Western and African print because we understand as African women, we live in both worlds and we want to dress for both occasions. And it should be normal for me to wear my African print in the workplace or at home. Now, what's also very um, competitive about is that we're very active on social media and we take a lot of feedback from women. So when we build our website, we take, we take a lot of feedback before we put it out. When we design garments, we'll put it up on social media, ask women, do you like this version or that version? So we really know what the market wants. Now here's some pictures from what we have in the past, just showing all the different body types that we cater for. We play a lot with color blocking, creating optical illusions to create, you know, a waist, hips here and there where women may not have them. Now, what we would do with the money. Our future plans is to launch our online store because we found that we have a store in Johannesburg, but a lot of women... Your four minutes is up. feel like you used it? I feel like I could have fit in a little bit more information. Okay. Um, well, in this question and answer, hopefully you can cover some of that. Right. Martine, do you have any questions? I do, and I think it's, uh, you, you obviously didn't have um, enough time to, to explain to us what you're going to be using the money for, and that was my, my concern. I, I, I can see that you're quite developed in the last year. Your business has grown quite um, dramatically and I just needed a clear indication of how you're going to be using the money yes. and which avenues you're going to be using the money for. Right. So, Okay, so our future plans with the money would be to launch our online store because a lot of feedback we got on social media is that people are in Cape Town and Bloemfontein so having a store in Johannesburg only does not cater to them and secondly to start production in-house because right now we um, outsource all of our manufacturing but we could do things faster, especially for private clients where it's only one garment, a special event, so if we can have a tailor in-house, that would help. Okay, Lucas? In all the presentations that we've had, this was, for me, the first one that, uh, that had uh, a very developed market research. She understood the industry and that. Um, but my, the question that, didn't, uh, that, that, that I would have is, at, at this moment, how, much, how well is the business doing? Is the business making money? Um, and if not, what are those challenges that are keeping the business to achieve in that? We're in a, ver a very new centre which just opened in July. So people are still learning about the centre and also trying to get people to come because we are a lot of our customers in the north and going to Marvel's a little bit out of the way for them. So they would rather we bring the stock to them. Than Why are you convinced that there's space for you? Because what we offer is not only everyday clothing, but it's more statement pieces, which is what plus size women struggled finding, and also the bridge of African and Western clothing. Okay, thank you very much. We'll deliberate and then call you back in a few minutes. Thank you. Okay. Hi. 
I think in the presentation, I mean, I really ran out of time before I could say everything I wanted to say, but I think I got the important stuff out. I would have used my time better by having shorter, concise answers, simplifying my sentences, and maybe speeding up the rate at which I was speaking. Okay, so uh, Afri Blossom. I found the plus size presentation a bit thin. Um, I just wasn't convinced. And, um, but I'm gonna let my team talk more on this one. You know, I was looking forward to her, her statement pieces. The, because as a plus size woman, I think one of the things that are lacking in South Africa at the moment are those statement pieces. And when I saw Afri Blossom, I was really wanting to see this African chic statement pieces. And I was looking for that. Um, she kept saying that they, she, she has Western and African. I didn't see any of that coming through. I definitely do believe that there's a market for that. I'm not saying the plus size market is catered for, mm -hmm. but Stutterfords, mm -hmm. Um, Edgar's, um, Jenny Button, Jenny Button uh, we Lorenz. spoke about Errol Lorenz, who have noted mm -hmm. that there's a market. So I don't think it's as easy as going in and saying I'm a plus size woman, I make plus size clothing, mm -hmm. and therefore there'll be a market. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not convinced. You see, my thing is, um, where the market exists is where she was sitting and saying, African shaking that, yes. Um, Jenny Barton and those guys don't cater for that yeah. market. So that market is there. But what I am seeing, it's, it's, not, it's not telling me that. It's not giving me that. So it's even still substandard. So at the moment, the pieces that I have in front of me and that are, are the basic pieces that you find everywhere for plus size women. And they battling to find that piece that is that is amazing for them, that is that is selling for them and that. If you are going to give them that, you've got the market. But if you're going to give them the basics that they can get from anywhere else and that you're missing the market. Tatwit, is there anything you'd like to change in your pitch? Yeah, I would add how the business is doing financially at the moment mm -hmm. and get through the whole presentation. So manage my time bit. So you feel with us, I was manager this Katsako Yeah, I spoke a little bit too much on certain points. How do you think that is going to affect the outcome of the outcome? You never know, because it could just show I, that I am passionate about what I'm doing, hence I spend more time on the things that are maybe more important to me. I want them to know that we're passionate about what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and we are a brand for plus-size women, for women. Everything is well thought out. We don't just do things for the sake of doing them. This is when we find out that I'm going to talk for you to know my time. Yeah, boy. Back. Thank you. I thought you did an awesome presentation. Thank you. The presentation much. was nice. Um, I'm not sure about the content of the presentation. So uh, each of us is going to give you feedback. I think I'd like to start with Lucas. We spoke yesterday in that. Um, I, I love your idea. I am mad about the whole African Blossom, and, and that's what I asked you about the name yesterday. I love that. I love the logo and everything. But what you brought for me here as clothes and that are not showing that. They are not talking to that. They are not talking about this. You didn't bring me the statement pieces that you talk about. Now, I sit and say, what you talk about and what you've given me, they don't marry together. Bonolo, as a plus-size woman, I was very excited about your concept. But having said that, I'm extremely disappointed at what you've presented to us today. 
you, you, you created the feeling that you were going to wow us with, with your statement, African chic pieces, and that didn't come through at all. Personally, from, um, from me, I think that is where you should focus because there's a great need for African authenticity at the moment, but through an African chic platform, and that didn't come through for me. Okay, young Bonolo. Firstly, I mean, I think it's fantastic that you're in business at this age and that you've trucked and made progress and uh, have kept your doors open even after the challenges that you started with at the beginning of the business. And some of the things that we discussed were you need to redefine African chic. What does that mean? Define it. Define lifestyle. You know, a blog that's a plus size blog. Martine was talking about go on to Pinterest and type in plus size and there's lots of content that comes up. So it's not this unique thing that only you've got available to you, only you're offering to the market. I mean, we spoke about Errol Lorenz, Studderfords, Woolworths, Mr. Price, all of them stock um, plus size basics. We spoke about Jenny Button. So I'm not sure even your research is sufficient in terms of who you imagine your competitors to be, right? Um, it's a lot broader than what you've presented. Unfortunately, we're not going to go forward with you because we feel there's still more work that you need to do. I think you took it a bit for granted in terms of the plus size market. I don't think you fully understand it and I don't think that you appreciate that your competitors are much broader than what you say they are, what you think they are, you need to go and do more work. Um, just calling yourself plus size um, as, a, as a brand or being a big girl yourself doesn't make you understand the market, okay? Great. Thank you. Thank you, all the best. Okay. Oh, and I just wanted to say, um, with regard to what I brought you, unfortunately I couldn't bring you our new Afrinique stuff for because it's in progress. So this was from our last collection and you'll be wowed the next time you see our collection. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look, she needs to redefine a couple of things. One thing that she needs to redefine, but not only needs to re redefine, what does she mean when she says lifestyle? Plus size lifestyle and that. What is it that she's offering in terms of, of lifestyle? And that that she still battles to, to talk about. You know, she talks about the blog here. She talks about uh, fashion consulting there. But she needs to bring this together um, on, a, on a proper business plan and put it out as her service offerings because that should be what the brand is about.